Hello everyone and welcome back to Jesus Gypsies. We're still in the month of February and we're still talking about love. But today's episode is about God's love for us. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in prayer and then we're going to turn straight to the Bible and see what God's love for us looks like. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for gathering with us today. And uh, we just thank you for this platform to be able to speak to your body. Um, let us speak your words. Let us um, be able to advocate whatever it is that you'd like to place on their hearts. Um, let us um, be able to embody your love, Father God, and to be able to um, just spread that. Spread it all across the world, Father God. And let us just um, soften our hearts today and listen to what you have to say and just be able to leave here a better person to be able to um, be more like your son and um, to just spread love, Father God. We just pray for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the first scripture that comes to mind when you think about God's love for us is John 3.16. If any of you are into sports, football, then you know Tim Tebow and how he likes to wear that under his eyes. And that scripture just represents fully how much God loves us. And the scripture is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Wow, that's pretty deep. I mean, if you could just stop and think about that for a second, that... The love is so unconditional, and God's love for us is so immense. Uh, he was willing to give His only Son to die for us, for our sins, your sins, my sin, everybody's sins, to make them pure and right and just in His eyes. I mean, could you imagine sacrificing one of your children for... No. I mean, He gives me a rough time sometimes, and <laughs> I'm have a hard time but I would never imagine giving him up for others for their success basically for them to come be part of my family yeah well I mean you have to give away some of your family to build your family I mean that's quite a sacrifice you know um, it kind of blows my mind when you really think about it um, Sacrificing is a lot for humans and for God to just say, you know what, I'm going to place myself in human form and then die for you. I mean, most of the times people die for their king. And I just love to the aspect that our king died for us. And I mean, that's, that's quite an example. Like we said in the last video, for one to lay down one's life for their friend. I mean, that's beautiful perception of love. In the Old Testament, they used to have to sacrifice birds, goats, small animals yeah. to show their love to God and to show God and to repent to God for all that they have done. And Jesus was the last person to do that, the first and last person yeah. to yeah. do that. He, he even took away the sacrifice of having to kill another animal for your repentance. And another verse that I really enjoy that encompasses God's love is 1 John 3, 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. And it's so true that once you accept Jesus into your life, you're no longer of the world, but of God and his eternal life. This is just a fragment of what life really encompasses. Yeah, literally a vapor in time. If you imagine, even if you made it to a hundred, it's just literally a vapor in time. So Of eternity. I yeah. mean, eternity is forever. So... There is no another hundred years and then it's over. It's forever. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it's, it's amazing when you say that, to say, you know, that and now I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, so now I'm reborn. And to just now embody a whole new lifestyle, a whole new way about going through things, I mean, it's just incredible to think that now the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me and 
that has cleansed my soul and now I'm right with God. And, you know, that's not to say that you never make mistakes or that, yeah. or that, you know, you could just go about life just doing whatever it is you please anymore. No, I mean, ultimately, if you're a child of God and you have the Holy Spirit, that should urge you to not ever want to sin simply because you don't want to feel that separation from Christ. You know? But as humans, we are sinners and we are unperfect. There is no yes. perfection in this world. Which then brings me to my other point about God's love for us. We're sinners. We're unperfect. That's why grace is implemented. You know, mm. God gave us grace. You know, we are able to come to him and repent, you know, confidently come to him like the noble king that he is place it at his throne and grace wipes that slate clean now that's not saying it's a get out of free card every time because once but again repentance but repentance is a form of saying that you won't do it yes, again yes a complete 180 mm -hmm. so and yeah we fall short of that but in our heart we don't want to do that again no no definitely not you just He's your father. And let's face it, as parents, what's the one thing you hate hearing from your parents the most? I'm not upset, I'm but I'm disappointed. disappointed. Ooh, well, I tell you, I don't want to disappoint God. I don't know about you guys, but so that makes me, um, that makes me really think about what unconditional love is and what God's love is for us. So now we're going to go ahead and turn to the question of the day, guys. Question of the day is, how would you describe the difference between human love and godly love that's a that's a big uh, contrast per se so. I would say that human love doesn't have grace it doesn't have the ability to see past one iniquities and just accept them yeah. um, where God's love is new every day it's merciful every day it's he gives you grace every day. And even at the end of that day that might have been so horrible, you still have that grace and mercy and love. Where at the end of the day when I've been fighting with my husband, I'm still upset while I'm going to bed. And if I go to bed upset, I wake up in the morning a tad bit still yeah. irritated. You know, I think the reason that God is so graceful is because nothing that we do could ever surprise him. In fact, he already knows we're going to do it before we even know we're going to do it. And so therefore, he's already went through the process of forgiving before we've even done it. I mean, think about it. Could you imagine if you already knew I was going to do something that would hurt you and you could just start the process of forgiving me before I'd even done it, you know? Yeah, did it. Before I have even did it. <laughs> Um, not only that, he does, he sees us separate from our iniquities. Yes. He doesn't, he looks past those. He doesn't see Kim, the mom that yells at her kids when she gets frustrated. He sees Kim, the mom that loves her children, yeah. no matter what, even in that moment of breaking down and not having the patience I need for them. He separates me from that. He doesn't see me with that and then me. He only just sees me. Yeah. In your purest form. Mm -hmm. Even the form that when we're so broken and we're even so distraught with ourselves and we can't see that in ourselves, he still sees us that way. And I just find that amazing that, I mean, people think of themselves extremely highly a lot of times. You know, you walk around with a lot of pride. I, I know I do. I don't know about others, but I, I seem to be pretty prideful some days. And aside from that, of anything that I could boast in myself, I would always want to boast in the Lord first. But nevertheless, he looks down upon me like, man, I'm so proud of that guy for just wanting to just be closer to me. That's my son, and I adopted him, and I couldn't love him any more or any less, even when he hates himself. And... I have days where I just beat myself up and I just, I tear myself down sometimes and, and, and I can just trust and know that God is watching over me saying, son, that is not you. Those are all false narratives and I love you no matter what. And that's just such a fulfilling feeling, you know, to know that I'm loved either way, whether, you know, I'm having a rough day, a great day, an emotional day, an offset day. It's just an amazing feeling to know that no matter what, he's never changing. Mm -hmm. So 
All right, which brings us to our application. We're finally done with this season and it's time to apply all the things that we've learned throughout this uh, month. And um, yeah, so how exactly would we go about applying Jesus' love, unconditional love, God's love? You know, how exactly would we go about applying this? I'm going to bring it back to scripture yes. because that <laughs> is exactly, Bible is, what do they say? It is the basic instructions before leaving this earth. Amen. So, this is what our basic instructions tell us. <laughs> It says in Matthew 18, 21, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times seven. I'm very good at math, and I don't quite know that answer, <laughs> and I know... What he is basically saying is no matter what, forgiveness is the key to loving. Yeah. You know, if he can forgive Judah for giving him to his enemies, we definitely can forgive others for cutting us off while we're driving or not following the rules the way that we think they should be followed. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, it's um it's unsurpassable the, the way that forgiveness changes the aspect of everything that we would normally look at through our lens mm -hmm. because it not only frees us but then it yes. frees them you know everybody is released from that bondage of I'm gonna correct this wrong or I'm gonna make things right because um, let's face it guys we can't make things right mm -hmm. they can't make things right through forgiveness grace and love of God I mean that's ultimately how we achieve this unconditional Jesus godly love. One of the other things that I like to implement is assuming good intent. So just because other people have wronged us doesn't mean that their heart isn't in good intent. Doesn't mean that they weren't coming from a place of goodness. Yeah. It just means maybe that we didn't take it that way and that's okay too. But you don't want to harbor that anger and that lack of love because of lack of understanding. You just, I personally like to assume that they are coming from a good place. Like the example of when someone's cutting me off on the road. I like to assume that they're in their own mind and they have their own things going on. It has nothing to do with me personally. They're not like, you see that girl in the car? I'm going to cut her <laughs> off. That is not what they're thinking. No. They're late for work and they need to get where they're going and you're just an obstacle course to them. And it's not that they're trying to wrong you or sin against you, but rather just try to do the best they can on this earth. Yeah. So that, uh, that kind of sums everything up for this episode. And um, if you guys have any prayer requests, um, prayer praises, We'd like to hear these things. Drop them in the comment box below. And we'd like to welcome all our new subscribers and just say welcome to the Jesus Gypsies. And if you could please give us a big thumbs up as it helps our algorithm and spread God's word. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And there is a little bell next to it so you can be notified if you'd like for all the videos that get uploaded yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and close us in prayer and then that'll do it for us guys Heavenly Father just thank you for gathering with us today thank you for your word thank you for scripture thank you for unconditional love your love your your son's love thank you for everything that he's ever done for us thank you for sending them to this world thank you for the example that he set, the ministry that he has established Father God, thank you for the sacrifice that he was brave enough to actually fulfill. Um, we, just, we just love every bit of everything that Christ has ever done for us, Father God, and we strive every day to emulate um, his behavior, his mannerism, his thoughts, his beliefs, and we just try to embody that, Father God, so that we can um, just um, be an example like Christ 
to others around us and hopefully that they would inspire to you know walk the same walk father god and that way we can just build in the body of christ we just thank you for your precious son and and your unfailing love for us father god in jesus name amen amen all right guys until next time we did great on that one